If you work with express root at all, then no doubt you will know we have the concept of different pyrian types. Most people will work with the blue line here, that's the private pyrian that takes you to the world of generally private IPs inside of virtual networks, virtual WANs, private endpoints, etc, etc. And that's what the majority of customers think when they think of their use case for express root. There is also the red line here, which is the Microsoft peer-in, and that's the world of public IPs, possibly public ASNs, and getting access to public IPs inside of the Microsoft network. A semi-common question that I get is, when I'm planning my express route deployment, do I need the red line? How should I think about a possible use case in my business for having the red line? And I think it's a fair question. You want to make sure that you're not missing anything, especially in the early design phases. So I can tell you that the use cases are reducing. And definitely it's the case that the customers that use the red line for the right reasons in the minority. So let's explore in this brief video why you should and why you should not use the Microsoft peering. Sometimes I find it's easier to address these questions by asking the opposite question. Why shouldn't I use the Microsoft peering? Well, I can give you three reasons why you shouldn't or perhaps three common mistakes or three unforeseen reasons why not to do it. Number one is complexity. It's a different type of networking fundamentally. Generally, we're working with public IPs here. So you're advertising public IPs from your network, either directly or via a provider you're working with into Microsoft. And in return, you get public IPs back using things called root filters, which I'll cover in a second. The implication of that for an enterprise network architect is that generally when you work with public IPs, they land in a different area of your network. So they generally come into some sort of DMZ. They have a different level of layering between your inside private network and the outside network, both inbound and outbound. And we're talking normally different services, different filtering, different thinking around security. Whereas the blue line with private IPs, that's more of a data center extension, may still have a firewall, but certainly a different risk profile. And quite often these are in separate places inside of the network. So where you take in private network connections may not be in the same place where you take in public connections. So standing up the red line can normally take a bit of time and a bit of thinking for your network architects and network engineers. Therefore, we should think carefully about if we are going to go to the trouble of standing up the red line, are we doing it for the right reasons? A reason not to use the red line, if you can help it, is Yes, on drawings such as this in our documentation, we show the logo for M365 services. But as the first line in our Microsoft peering documentation says, Microsoft 365 was created to be accessed securely and reliable on the internet. This is probably an entire video in itself. All I'll say here is the Microsoft 365 services that we use and love, such as Office, are in part delivered via the Microsoft Edge network the series of hundreds of pops that live around the world, that cache some of this content, accelerate some of this content. And if you're using the Microsoft peer, you're not benefiting fully from that edge acceleration. And you can get yourselves into all sorts of routing asymmetry problems, DNS issues. So if you don't have an absolute concrete requirement to use Microsoft peer for 365, then you definitely should avoid that. And in my experience, there's only a handful of customers I can think of who have that need and normally it boils down to some sort of regulation. And the third one here, and this is the biggest thing that's changed in the past few years, is in the past, customers would use the red line, the Microsoft peering, to get access to the public IPs that are used in front of all the Microsoft PaaS services like Azure Storage, Azure SQL, any of the other hundreds of PaaS services that we have. What we've seen over the past three to five years and what has definitely accelerated in the past two years with Azure Private Link is nearly every single Azure PaaS service has a private networking story, whether that be private link or VNet injection. And I'll leave this link here, aka.ms slash why private link. That explains the difference between those two things. Fundamentally, what that means is you can get to these services if you desire over a private IP in your VNet, which is reachable from on-prem over the blue line, which is fundamentally how you get to your VNets using private IPs. So we can get to most PaaS services today without the red line. I've laid out the reasons why maybe you shouldn't use the Microsoft peer in, but let's address the video's title, which is, well, what are the scenarios where it does still make sense? And I've got four scenarios for you. So let's go through them one by one. Number one, we've always already talked about. So you have a 
genuine need to not use the public internet for M365, D365, etc. And I'll leave a link to our document, which is all about Express Route for Office 365, which does a really good job of laying out the reasons, primarily why you shouldn't do this, but also the use cases where it would be recommended. Number two, bi-directional comms. When we think about the red line, we often think about getting access to Microsoft IPs. But of course, in the opposite direction, you as a customer are able to advertise public IPs that you have the right to do so, for example, from your autonomous system, you can advertise them into Microsoft over the Microsoft peering. And there are scenarios where that is advantageous. So I can think of some around Exchange Hybrid where we initiate a connection into your IP address. There also are some scenarios where, you know, maybe a service that's running on Azure might want to use your Microsoft peering to get into a public IP that you fundamentally own and advertise as opposed to going over the internet. But I would say, again, these are in the, the minority of use cases. A couple of, let's say, more networking orientated use cases, where I would say it still does make sense. This is one that I've seen crop up a few times. Number three here. Yes, I want to get to PaaS services like Azure Storage and Azure SQL. Yes, I know I can come over the blue line and use things like private endpoints to get to them. But there can be reasons why the private endpoint approach is prohibitive. I'll give you a couple of ideas to leave breadcrumbs to additional thinking. One that I've seen is commercial reasons. So let's think about private link, private endpoints. You pay per gigabyte to use private link for PaaS services. So if you have a scenario where maybe it's like a connected car scenario where you've got a huge amount of data flowing from left to right continuously between Azure and on-prem, machine learning, huge data ingest. If you're transferring terabytes of data, then those per gigabyte charges can add up. So if you come in over the red line, then there is no use of private link. You just get to the PaaS service and the PaaS service, it has to respond on its public IP and you have to access it on its public IP, but it's still a viable path. You have that performant, reliable underlay and combined with something like the Express Route Unlimited plan where you don't pay for data egress, it starts to make sense for a few of those niche scenarios due to commercial reasons. And you could also imagine a scenario where maybe you're developing a PaaS application on Azure. You just want to keep things simple. You want to access it over your express route, but you don't want to have to deal with any of the complexities related to DNS and private endpoints, etc. You just basically want to say, yep, there's my public endpoint, but when my on-prem site accesses it, it goes over the red line as opposed to the public internet. The fourth scenario is one that I've seen a couple of times, and that is... If a customer is deploying SD-WAN in Azure and they want to use SD-WAN as their primary logical overlay technology to get between cloud and on-prem and cloud and the rest of their sites, or maybe they've got a couple of big rock sites left on-prem and they want just a super reliable 10 gig pipe between their biggest on-prem data centers, which has still got SD-WAN appliances in, still got some on-prem data and apps, and they want to run a reliable underlay, the red line here, but they want to keep the overlay standardized using public IPs. So this SD-WAN appliance here could have a, a PIP, and because it's a PIP and not a private IP, that would get routed out of the red line here, and vice versa. So traffic would come in this way, into the Microsoft Global Network, and then drop into the PIP and get to the SD-WAN appliance that way. And this gives me the opportunity to mention those root filters that I talked about earlier. It's important to acknowledge that this is an area of complexity as well, which you have to think about and manage carefully. To get to that PIP, let's say this is this Azure region where the SD-WAN appliance is happening in France Central. You need to get that block of IP addresses from Microsoft that constitute all of the PIPs in France Central. There's no way of you coming in and saying, just Microsoft send me that one IP address. You have to go into this construct we call route filters or root filters. You go into the list of communities here and you look down the list. So if we were talking about Azure Friend Central, I would come in here and I'd say, yep, give me those IPs. You would then get all of the IP addresses for every PIP in France Central. Uh, yes, there are some subcategories for France Central, such as is Azure Storage front central, but there is no subcategory that says Azure VPN Gateway PIPs front central. What's the implication of that? 
you would be getting all of the pips for France Central sent into your network here on the red line. So yes, it would let your SD-WAN appliance build this tunnel here from on-prem into Azure over the Microsoft peering, but it would also tell your network that to get to any other PIP in France Central, this potentially is the preferred route. And you have to be careful there because there's many, many other customers running in France Central. And if you go ahead and look up in public DNS, another customer that happens to be hosted on Azure, and they're using a Microsoft PIP in their public DNS, you could end up sending traffic to another B2B partner without knowing to their PIP and their application on Azure down that red line. And that could create some unforeseen interest in troubleshooting scenarios. But as long as you approach it with your eyes open, I think it's okay. You could apply the appropriate filters here to only allow in your PIP, which is static and would never change. I'll finish by mentioning the FAQ that we have. Microsoft Peering's mentioned about uh, 30 times in here. And I'd call out some pretty salient points, which is remember that not all services get advertised on that red line. And the big ones that normally catch customers out in my experience are traffic manager and front door. So ultimately, Azure front door and traffic manager are delivered at the Microsoft Edge network. And as I said earlier, this red line kind of, it bypasses the edge and gives you kind of a, a shortcut into the pop wire express route, not into the public edge. So if you're trying to think about the red line as a reliable underlay for a service that's underpinned by Azure front door, for example, Azure virtual desktop, or even your own application, then that's one to watch out for uh, and be careful of. But I'll leave the link to this in the, the comments below. Well, thanks for watching. And if you were trying to understand all things Microsoft peering, I hope the video has been helpful.